Hello friends, this video on light part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Of light. Now there are a couple of terms which you need to know when you uh, try to understand the concepts of reflection of light. <clears throat> so let us look at some of the important terminologies. So the first thing is incident ray. It is that ray of light which strikes the surface. So as, as I was telling right, so let's say Let's say this is our object. So please get used to these two terms, object and image. So whatever you see in the mirror, that is the image. And you are yourself as the object. So basically here this boy is the object and this is his image in the mirror. Now the ray of light which falls on the mirror, this ray of light is the incident ray. The word incident means something which is like falling on a surface. So that ray is the incident ray. So if you try to make use of a simple diagram, let's say this is the mirror, this is your incident ray. The one in red color is the incident ray because it is striking the surface. Reflected ray. So after reflection it bounces back. So this green ray of light is the reflected ray which bounces back from the surface or the mirror. The third one is the normal that is a perpendicular to the surface at the point of incidence. So this is the point of incidence because this is the point where the incident ray has striked the mirror. So that is why this is the point of incidence. So from this point of incidence there is a line which is perpendicular to the surface. Right? So this line is called the normal. So basically you do not get to see the normal because it is an imaginary line. So but then why do we have the concept of normal? In order to make the study of reflection of light easier. So that, that's why we have this imaginary normal. But otherwise you never see a normal or a perpendicular line from the mirror. So th that doesn't exist in reality but that is an imaginary concept which helps us to build other concepts of uh, reflection of light in an easy way. The next is the angle of incidence. Now whenever the incident ray is striking the mirror, it will strike it at a certain angle. Sometimes it is like the angle is very large, sometimes the angle is very small. So it, the ray can be very steep, the ray can be very slant. So the angle might change. So this is the angle between the normal and the incident ray. So this is the angle of incidence. So you see, that's the importance of normal. So since you have normal, you can use something as the reference point. Similarly, you have angle of reflection. That is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So we generally denote angle of incidence with a small i and angle of reflection with a small r. So that, that's the normal convention that we follow. So these are the five important terms that you should know when it comes to laws or when it comes to reflection of light. So now comes the most important part of it that is the laws of reflection of light. So what are those important rules which need to be followed whenever reflection of light is taking place. So there are two laws of reflection. So the first law says that incident ray, reflected ray and normal all lie on the same plane. So basically this ray, this ray and this ray. These are the three lines and all of them lie on the same plane. Now what do we mean by same plane? So let's uh, talk about a sheet of paper. So if you are able to get all of them on the same sheet of paper, that means they are all on the same plane. But if you are not able to get all of them on the same sheet of paper, that means they are not lying on the same plane. That means you need three dimensions. Correct. So here in this case you see the incident ray normal and the reflected ray all of them are on this sheet of paper. So they are on the same plane. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So this is the second law. So that is angle I is equal to angle R. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So this is a very interesting law that when it, wherever reflection is taking place, it is a mandate that the incident ray and the reflected ray, they should make equal angles with the normal. So you might say that, okay, you are just telling a few laws, but why should I believe it? Why should I say that, okay, this is right? 
So let's try to prove the laws of reflection. So let's do something like this. So you take a plain glass, a glass surface and put it on a table. You take a laser light. When you switch it on, a straight beam of light falls on the surface and it gets reflected in this fashion. Now, what do you do? You keep changing the orientation of the incident ray. So as you change the orientation of the incident ray, what is actually happening? The angle of incidence is also changing because let's say this is where the normal is. So because normal is always perpendicular to the surface, correct? So let's say this is the normal. Now as you change the orientation, see initially this was angle of incidence. So now the angle of incidence is this. Now again if you further change the orientation, so the angle of incidence has changed. And what do you observe? You observe as you change the orientation of your laser beam, the reflected ray also changes. So in this case, this was the reflected ray. And if you actually measure these two angles, you will see that they are equal. So as the angle of incidence is changing, the angle of reflection is also changing to pro proving that both of them always remain equal. So now in order to prove that all of them lie on the same plane, what you can do is on the wall you mount a cardboard like this. So you can mount a board on the wall and then you take a sheet of paper where you actually draw the lines which we showed in the previous slide. So you perform the same experiment. It is just that you draw the normal in a piece of paper. You draw the incident ray in a piece of paper. You draw the reflected ray also in a piece of paper and you will be able to see that all of them lie on the same plane. So you are able to see them all in the same plane. So which again proves that the incident ray, reflected ray and normal, they all lie on the same plane. Now these are all very simple experiments and you can prove them very, very easily. So here what we have taken is basically this is the cardboard and here you have a surface from which reflection takes place. Maybe a, a shiny surface or a glass surface. Now as, as soon as you put the laser light from here, this is how the incident ray falls on the glass surface and what you have done you have fitted uh, a paper sheet a sheet of paper just behind it so as soon as you get to see the incident ray also just mark it with a pencil on the sheet of paper so you will also be able to see the reflected ray so you can just mark that also on the sheet of paper and even before doing all this you just draw a perpendicular from the glass surface on that paper. So when you take that paper out, this is how the paper would look like. So where you will have all the three rays, incident ray, normal and the reflected ray. And this proves the law of reflection that all these lie in the same plane. And that is why you were able to get them all on the same sheet of paper. So now let us look at some examples of reflection from nature. So what we see in our surroundings, let us have a look at some of the examples. So one most common example would be uh, near the water bodies because the surface of water itself acts as uh, a surface where reflection can take place. Now as I was telling you, I mean which kind of surface can act as a reflective surface? Basically the surfaces which are smooth, shiny, they all act as good reflective surfaces. Whether you talk about mirrors or you talk about um, uh, very shiny granite flooring so there also you are able to partially see your image or you talk about stainless steel utensils whether it is a spoon or it is a plate so there also you can see your image or you talk about the water body so if the same water is very dirty in that case you will not be able to see the image this clearly as you see on the screen but in this case since the water is very much clear that is why you are able to see a very clear and precise image. So it all depends on the surface of water or the kind of surface which you have because, because that actually decides the nature of image that will be formed for that object. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.